40% of, of the heat that we generate in our houses is lost due to air infiltration. <coughs> air coming into our house and then air leaving our house. And I'm gonna kind of just go through this really quick on you know the different things that you can do at your house right now before you can afford to do the major retrofitting. Um, there's weatherization programs through the community action agencies and then there's also ways that you can winterize your home and just do what you can right now with the, the low cost or even no cost ways to, to reduce energy. Um, for the first thing that people look at when they, when they get their bill, you know, they, they look at the amount, they write the check, and then they send it off to the utility company. And one of the main things that we're trying to educate people and teach them about is you have to look at your usage before you can make a difference in the cost you have to learn how to reduce your usage. Um, so be aware, read your bills. And a lot of people that I, that I visit and meet with, you know, they're, they're not aware of that. They're, they're on budget plans and they, they basically just write the check and send it off. Um, and a lot of things that utility companies do is they, they estimate the bills. Um, and then they, you know, the next month they'll do an actual reading, but there's a little, little, little lag time in there for um, the difference, you know, and they pay you to monitor and to budget your own bills. So people that are on budget plans, there's actually added fees for them to manage it for you. There can be. Um, so just be aware of what you're spending your money on, what you're using. Um, and obviously the most expensive thing in Michigan with our homes is, is heating it. Um, the second most expensive thing in your home is heating your hot water. And then it's your, your, your electric loads and your water usage. Um, so if we can, you know, again, keep that heat in our homes that we're producing, obviously we're going to reduce the, the amount of natural gas, propane, fuel oil, however we're heating our homes. And the, the three ways that homes, you know, leave your house is, again, by air infiltration. Homes naturally have a negative pressure at the bottom of your house, and that's where air sucks in, it comes in, it draws just like a chimney, and then at the upper portions of your house, it's got a positive pressure where air wants to escape and leave. So if we can stop the air coming in, you know, obviously there's gonna be less air to go out. So that's where we focus first is, you know, stop where the air sucks first. And, you know, again, if you have a two-story house, this effect is magnified because, you know, it's the higher you go, the more of the chimney effect you have. So, again, it draws, it sucks. And I always, you know, that's one of the first things that I try and teach people about is, you know, try and find where the air is coming in your house. It's either, you know, all the way around your foundation where your concrete meets your wood. I call it the finger hole because probably 90% of the homes that I visit, you can stick your fingers right up underneath the siding and there's a big gap in there. You know, and again, where, where you have a concrete foundation where it meets wood, you know, it's never true. You know, now we use things like sill seal and they make some other uh, more higher performing gasketing material for with new construction, you know, you get a better seal. Um, but that's again, that's something that's very easy to fix just by using silicone or the, the spray foam to Again, seal that perimeter of your foundation where your concrete meets your wood. And then obviously glass is a natural pore insulator. You know, you always have heat radiating through your glass. Um, so by, you know, using the plastic window kits and stuff like that, it's just a way, you know, because replacing windows is obviously very, very expensive. Um, so if you can, you know, buy these 99 cent window kits and just trap up airspace, you know, you're super insulated in your glass, and that's something that's, you know, obviously in the UP, very, very popular. Um, and then also, you know, obviously the insulation around your window jam. Um, all of the houses that I've built, you know, I've stuffed fiberglass. I don't know if any of you have done that. You know, you stuff fiberglass in there. And fiberglass, we want to fluff it, not stuff it, because it has very, very little performance if it's compressed. And for years, that was the, the standard way of doing it. Well, you can blow air right through fiberglass too. It's a great, great filter. Um, and that's one thing, I, I know Jim McKinnis, I was talking with him, and he just had all of his trim removed off of his windows, and they re-insulated around his window jams. Um, starting with the spray foam insulation, which is an actual air sealer as well. Um, and that's something that's really easy, you know, obviously if you feel, feel air blowing in around your trim, that's, that's something that you can do for that. Um, and obviously on doors too, again, 
probably the majority of the doors that I look at every day, at the bottom you can see daylight, at the top you can see daylight. You know, and obviously if you can see daylight, you got a problem with air coming into your house. Um, so there's, you know, again, very inexpensive products, weather seals, just uh, V-seal, just something that you can, you know, again, create a airtight channel so when you close that door you get a perfect air seal. Around your rim joist too, again, that's talking about the perimeter of your floor where your wood meets your concrete. You know, you can do that finger hole gap around the exterior of your perimeter, but also when you're down in your basement or looking up at your crawl spaces, you see all these you know, the joist bay cavities. And that's again another place to target with silicone or spray foam. And again, by just sticking fiberglass insulation in there, if there's airs coming through there, you per virtually have zero performance from that fiberglass. So you have to air seal it first. Your outlets and switches, you know, put your, the back of your hand up next to your outlet. It's a design hole. You know, it's a box that is never insulated properly so stick your hand by there if you can feel air again it's lower so it sucks in um, they make you know just the little foam gaskets you can put behind your switch plate and actually the the child protection plugs those were created to stop air infiltration first and then they of course market them for child protection so they don't stick forks in there and electrocute themselves and then again, there's the positive pressure on the upper areas. Um, so can lights, any penetration that goes through your, your ceiling, your attic hatch is, is usually a very, very big loser. So make sure your attic hatch, you know, and if you're ever curious about it, take a candle or something that smokes and hold it up there and see if air is sucking out through your attic hatch or through your recessed lights. Um, because again, that's something that you can gasket and it's something that you know, you can insulate. And then also in your floors, your, your basement floor, go down in your basement sometime and look up and see the penetrations that go up through your floor, whether it's plumbing, plumbing electrical, make, you, you can seal that off too. And again, you're stopping that air from moving up. Um, and that's again, something that's very, very easy and inexpensive to do. Um, obviously the door sweeps, these are just pictures of the things that I've already talked about. Um, you cannot do enough caulking to, to our existing homes. You just can't. Um, and obviously if there's windows that are leaky, you don't want to caulk them shut. A lot of them are painted shut, but they make uh, rope caulking, which is something that is, you know, it's again, something that kids can do. And they love it. I go to schools all over the Upper Peninsula and I give a presentation that's really similar to this. Um, you know, and I get to talk about it and they're and they like, I know where I can use that and they run home and they're so excited about it they're like oh my gosh I can make a difference you know that's that's what kids want and and that's really my favorite part, part about my job is you know working and teaching these kids because they can go home and, and make an immediate impact on, on their parents energy bills um, this is a picture of the you can't really see it too good but the rim joist again you have your joist that supported the weight of your floor and then you know air seal it insulated. Um, a lot of them are. It's amazing. And foundations are a natural loser. You know, it's cement. It's actually got a worse performance value than glass. It's something we produce heat in our house and heat goes to cold. So if you're producing heat in your house and you have concrete that goes to the ambient ground outside, you know, it just, psh, psh, you know, how many of you walk outside your homes in the middle of the winter time and you see that the drip line, snow melts there. And everyone's like, great, I don't have to shovel around that part. But no, it's because that heat is escaping from your house. And that's again why the, the energy code that was passed, you know, we have to insulate those foundations. You know, we have two or three exposed blocks, you know, where, you know, again, heat, heat just leaves your house all the time, 24 hours a day. <clears throat> 